students. So last time we were discussing applications of Gauss's law or theorem. So I continue with that. So I continue. So we have done four applications. First was E electric field due to a point charge. I remind you, you proved that E is one by four perhaps or not two by R square, where symbols have their usual meaning. Then we discussed the electric field due to, a, due to an infinite line of charge. What was the expression for that? E was lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught r. Right? Then we discussed E due to an infinite sheet of charge. What was the expression? E was sigma by two epsilon naught. Kept the expressions. We discussed lambda by two pi epsilon naught is correct. Sigma by two epsilon naught is also correct. Then we discussed spherical shell of charge. Fourth was spherical shell of charge. I quickly remind you that for spherical shell of charge, we said, uh, we actually stated two results, two properties of this distribution, which we named as two shell theorems. A and B, two shell theorems. So what was the idea? The idea was if we have a uniformly dense spherical shell of charge with certain radius, certain total charge Q. But condition was that sigma is constant, your surface charge density is constant. That is, it is uniformly dense spherical shell of charge. So two shell theorems were first was if we have a point charge or any charge outside this shell, it will exert force on it as if all its charge were concentrated at its center. The theorem was saying that this uniformly dense spherical shell of charge behaves for external points as if all its charge were concentrated at the center. Second theorem or a property <coughs> of this distribution was that if you place uh, any charge inside the shell, it will not exert any force on it. So we proved that electric field inside this is zero. Electric field outside is same as that for point charge located at the center, having charge equal to total charge of the shell, right? So now we move on. This was what we have done. We summarized these results. Now, Fifth, my today's topic is under this heading applications of Gauss's law, I have to discuss 
spherically symmetric charge distribution i hope you know the idea of spherical symmetry still i will remind you or refresh your idea so i have spherically symmetric charge distribution now so let me draw a figure I have actually a solid sphere of charge, right? Let me select some other color. So let this point be the center, and let capital R be radius so i have some solid sphere of charge but it is spherically symmetric so it has some total charge q so its total charge r is its radius right now this figure is showing this distribution in cross section it is actually a solid sphere of charge and we are saying that charge is spherically distributed in, in a way that it is spherically symmetric. What is the meaning of that? Meaning of that is that uh, one thing is that we take its volume charge density rho, volume charge density, that is charge per unit volume with SI unit coulomb per cubic meter. So charge is distributed in three dimensions. So we talk of volume charge density. So one thing is we say that a rho is constant. Rho is constant everywhere. Rho is constant everywhere then it is a uh, uniform charge distribution. But we are not saying that. We are saying rho, that is volume charge density. I'm telling you what is the meaning of spherically symmetric charge distribution. So we are saying that volume charge density rho at any point, at any point depends only on the distance of the point from the center. Of the point from the center. This condition is called spherical symmetry. Which condition? That the volume charge density at any point in the distribution depends only on the distance of the point from the center. That means if I move certain distance from the center, then if rho has certain value, then that value of rho will be also for that distance in all directions. Whether you go this way, this way, this way, if you are at the same distance from the center, the density is constant. Now, at different hours, that is, at different distances from the center, 
rho may change, but for a given distance, rho is constant in all directions. That is the meaning of spherical symmetry. And when we move from the center a certain distance, rho will be same in all directions. Now, if you move different distance from the center, rho may be different, but in all directions at a given distance from the center, it will be same. What we want? We want to figure out using Gauss's law, uh, the electric field outside this distribution. We want to see how this spherically symmetric charge distribution behaves for outside points. That means we want to find electric field outside the distribution. We want to find then electric field inside the distribution, right? So let us move forward. So again, I draw this distribution. What am I assuming? Rho is spherically symmetric. By that, what we mean? That if we move certain distance from the center, rho will be same in all directions for a given distance from the center, right? So let me use another color. So this is my center now. This is the radius of the distribution, R. Q is total charge. O is total charge. Now first, I want to find E outside the distribution, right? So for that, we construct a Gaussian surface. Let me construct a Gaussian surface. Picture is getting dirty. Uh, let me clear it first and try to make better. So we construct a spherical Gaussian surface, spherical Gaussian surface centered on the distribution. That means concentric with the distribution, right? So Gaussian surface and the charge distribution has common center. The diagram is showing the distribution as well as the spherical Gaussian surface in cross section. Let, let me use another color. Let small r be the radius of the Gaussian surface, right? Now, this solid sphere of charge can be considered as a nest of spherical shells. You need to understand that. So I am saying this distribution can be considered as a nest of concentric concentric spherical shells understands this this distribution can be considered as a nest of concentric shells let me explain that for example if i have one shell then another shell then another shell 
Then another shell, all having common center, shell over shell, I can construct this distribution, right? Got it. Now, using shell theorems, we know, for example, if I am at this point, I am inside these shells, but I'm outside these shells. Now outside the shells, we know that those shells for the, will treat me or any charge placed at point P like point charge. Right. By that what I mean that these shells will exert force on me as if their charge is concentrated at their centers, but these shells in which I am uh, lying inside, they will not exert any force on me. They will not contribute to the electrostatic force on the charge placed at point P, right? Now, and another thing, since the electric field has only radial component from spherical symmetry, so if DE is the electric field due to each shell, then and E is the total field now all these are similarly directed outside radially outward so the total field is just the summation or integral of the electric fields due to the shells forming the distribution now we don't need to have a vector here because all these de's are parallel electric fields due to each shell. So the total field is just there, the magnitude of the total field is just the summation of all these fields, right? And I, at uh, one point I will show, now DE is outside and E is also radial, radially outward. Now, any shell will behave like a point charge located at the center for external points. That means DE, electric field, due to each shell outside, the distribution will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught d over r square, right? where DQ is the charge contained in each shell, in each shell, right? D is electric field due outside due to each shell. I have written electric field expression for point charge because we know that the shell behaves for external points as if all its charge were concentrated at the center. So DQ charge contained in each shell, a one by four pi epsilon at R square will come out because for all shells forming the spherical distribution of charge uh, have a same R, it's constant, where at this point, so what will I get? E, one by four pi epsilon naught, R square is outside, integral dq, if you add all the charges of the shells, you will get the total charge in the distribution. So I will get what? E is one by four pi epsilon naught, Q by R square. 
is integral because integral dq is q. This is my result. So electric field outside a spherically symmetric charge distribution is same as dot as that of an electric field due to a point charge located at the center of the distribution and having charge equal to total charge in the distribution. But for this condition is R is greater than R. That means point of observation is outside the distribution. This is my result first. That means this spherically symmetric distribution of charge also behaves for external points like a point charge located at the center with charge equal to total charge in the distribution. Right? Now let us move the calculation of electric field inside the distribution. So E inside the distribution so I again draw the figure so I have my spherically symmetric charge distribution right let use this color this is center and that is r total charge is q now in order to find the electric field inside the distribution I construct a Gaussian surface. Now, which color to use? Let me use this blue. So, I construct a spherical Gaussian surface. So, this is my spherical. This is your R. This is radius of the distribution, and this is my spherical Gaussian surface, which is concentric with the distribution and which has which color to use? Let me use black, which has radius R. Now, applying Gauss's law, applying Gauss's law, closed integral e dot dA is uh, I will not use till okay, I will use your Q. Now I will write Q in by epsilon naught. Actually, I don't want to confuse with this Q. This Q is total charge in the distribution. Now, what is this Q in? It is what? Charge inside the Gaussian surface, right? This Q in is charge inside the Gaussian surface right now electric field is radial area vector dA is outward A is outward so this dot product will become just A dA because angle is zero let me write cos 0 degree. 
I will write Q prime where because I have to consider only that portion of the charge which is inside my Gaussian surface. So Q dash here is the charge contained in the sphere of radius r. So Q dash is only a portion of Q. Q is the total charge in the distribution, right? Q prime is the charge contained in the sphere of this small radius r inside the Gaussian surface, which is the portion of Q, right? So what will it become? E can be taken outside because E is constant of the surface. Q prime by epsilon naught, then it will be four pi r square. Q prime by epsilon naught. Four pi r square is surface area of the Gaussian surface, then what I get, which color to use, this one, I move, T is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, Q prime by R square. This is my electric field for inside points. Over here, R is less than that. But this expression is okay. But this is not in terms of Q. It is in terms of Q prime. That means it is not in terms of the total charge of the distribution. Q. I want this expression in terms of Q, that's total charge in the distribution, like this, right? What, what do we do? We assume rho is constant everywhere, right? Now, up to this point, we don't need rho to be constant everywhere. We just need spherical symmetry, right? Now, assuming rho volume charge density is constant everywhere, is constant everywhere. So if it is constant everywhere, that means if you take any portion rho will be same. So I equate volume charge density in this small sphere to the volume charge density of the total distribution, because rho is constant. So I can write Q prime by four by three by R Q is equal to Q by 4 by 3 pi R Q. Understand it. Q is the total charge in the distribution and 4 by 3 pi R Q is its volume. So my right hand side is volume charge density of the whole distribution. This is volume charge density of the small sphere. Q prime is charge contained in this sphere smaller one and four by three pi r cube is its volume, right? I've equated them in a four by three pi, four by three pi will go, I will get what? I will get Q prime is Q times small r by capital R cube, right? Let me name this equation. Oh, I have 
name of this first I name this second I name this third right I obtain it q dash is q times small r q by capital R q I using third in second use another color using third in second what I get is one by four by epsilon not so I will replace here Q prime of R square here, right? Q prime is Q by R Q by capital R Q, right? R square will go with this r square what will i get what will i get e is one by four by epsilon naught q r by capital R cube let this be my fourth equation right valid only when R is sorry R is uh, less than R we're inside <coughs> So my expression is 1 by 4 by epsilon naught q r by capital R q valid r less than r and uniform sphere rho is constant right now c let me name this equation. I have named it four. So we said for outside points, it behaves like a point charge located at the center. So for this result, spherical symmetry is sufficient. A rho constant throb is not required. But for this result, this result spherical symmetry is sufficient. For this result to hold a good we need rho to be constant everywhere now see what is electric field at the center of this distribution or that i have to put r equal to zero use this expression because i am inside and i put small r zero is zero that means electric field at the center electric field at the center of this distribution is zero that is obvious because we said we can construct this uh, solid sphere of charge as a nest of spherical shells when i am at the center i am inside all the shells forming the solid sphere of charge and inside uh, shell there is no electric field so electric field at the center is zero then it is directly proportional to r small r as i move from center to the surface this r increases this thing is constant so it is proportional to r so it increases linearly uh, till r is capital r and when r is capital r it will become one by four by epsilon or q by capital r square and same is here if r is r capital r where on the surface it becomes one by four by epsilon q by capital r square so they agree at the surface both expressions whether you put here r is equal to capital r 
or you put here small r is equal to capital r you will get e is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught uh, q by capital r square then after that this is not valid you have to use this that means when you move outside the distribution beyond small r is equal to capital r then electric field is decreasing with distance is inversely proportional to r square so we can draw this dependence situation is like this here i have electric field and on this side i have small r then first it is linear in another color then it decreases now at this point small r is capital r so you are on the surface right so here e is maximum how much it is 1 by 4 perhaps or not q by capital r square because small r is capital r small r is capital r 1 r will q 1 by 4 perhaps not q by capital r square right now in this portion e is proportional to distance so that's why graph is straight line here electric field is zero you are at the center of distribution then beyond surface when you move away is inversely proportional with r square that means it is proportional to r is by minus two right this is how electric field of this distribution behaves. That means at the center electric field is zero, then it increases up to surface, at surface it becomes maximum, then it decreases. Now you must remember for E proportional to R within the distribution, this result will hold only when rho is constant. For this result, E is proportional to R is by minus two. Rho constant is not a restriction. Spherical symmetry is. So we have completed another application. We move to the next application. This was fourth. Now fifth. Let me use this page. Now my fifth application is about we have to prove certain results about an isolated charged conductor. So a charged isolated conductor a charged isolated conductor what is the meaning of that if i have a copper wire some copper wire and current is going through it it is not not isolated conductor this current is going through it. battery or some other source of emf is supplying charge right so what is then isolated for example, I have a lump of copper, lump of copper, 
I charge it by some means, positive or char charge or negative charge. I charge it by some means. It is not connected to any uh, source of EMF. So there is no current flowing through it. That means all the charges which are placed on it are in equilibrium. They are at rest. Then it is a charged isolated conductor. Now for such an isolated charges conductor, we have certain properties. We call them sometimes theorems. First, I will state the first one. I call it A. So what is the result? Let me use this color. It says an excess charge. Place it on an isolated, an isolated, charged. When it is isolated, I first let X charge place it on an isolated conductor. Isolated conductor. Moves entirely entirely to the outer surface of the conductor. None of the excess charge none of the excess charge is found within the body of the conductor body of the Conductor. I repeat an excess charge, place it on an isolated conductor, moves entirely to the outer surface of the conductor. None of the excess charge is found within the body of the conductor. So I hope you understand the statement that when you charge it, this isolated conductor, no charge will be within it. It will be lying on the outside surface. Now the key to this proof is that there are no internal currents, no internal currents in the isolated conductor. And there are no internal currents that means electric field inside the isolated conductor is zero because if there is electric field then there will be force on the charges and they will move and produce current so when there are no internal currents that means electric field inside the conductor is zero isolated conductor so now we will prove that the charges placed on it lie on the outer surface. So let me consider a lump of copper. It can have any shape, right? Now I hang it by a thread. This is thread. So all the charge will stay in it because thread is an insulator. Surrounding air is insulator. So we say Q is the charge placed on it. Positive charge we have placed on it. 
So we have to prove that it lies on the outer surface. What that we consider in Gaussian surface. So this is my Gaussian surface. I have constructed it with a broken line, but it is not broken, it's a Gaussian surface. So it is my Gaussian surface line just understand it just inside the actual surface of the conductor right so we are considering the Gaussian surface lying just inside the actual surface of the conductor. So it's lying just inside, still it is within the conductor. So now we know electric field inside is zero. So no line of force will penetrate through the Gaussian surface because it is lying inside. Right? Applying Gauss's law. Applying Gauss's law, closed integral e dot dA. I will write here Q in by epsilon naught. You want to get uh, this Q confused with discharge, right? Q in is here charge enclosed within the Gaussian surface. Now what is flux? Zero. Because electric field inside the surface is zero, that means what? Qn is zero. That means there is no charge inside the Gaussian surface. So implies there is no charge inside the Gaussian surface, but there is charge. When we say here charge, is excess charge, net charge, right? But there is excess charge excess there is excess charge in the conductor it must lie outside the Gaussian surface that is on the actual surface of the conductor. Hence, proved. Follow the argument. The result was. <coughs> Theorem was an excess charge placed on an isolated conductor moves entirely to the outer surface of the conductor. None of the excess charge is found within the body of the conductor. So we took an isolated <coughs> conductor. We said let there be positive charge Q in it. Then we constructed a Gaussian surface lying just inside the actual surface of the conductor. We said since there are no internal currents, charges are at rest, electrostatic situation is there. So there is no electric field inside. We applied Gauss's law. We concluded there is no flux through the surface. So charge inside the Gaussian surface is zero, but there is charge, excess charge on the conductor. It must lie outside the Gaussian surface. 
that is on the actual surface where outside the Gaussian surface there is actual surface of the conductor hence we have proved this result so we stop here I will give you homework we will continue with this isolated conductor there are other results related to it I will give you homework first use this color question is simple question A point charge of 1.84 microcoulomb is at the center of a cubic Gaussian surface. Fifty five centimeter on edge on edge find by E that is electric flux through the surface. Right? So let this be my question one. So I repeat this question, a point charge of 1.84 microcoulomb is at the center of a cubical Gaussian surface. 55 centimeter on H, find electric flux phi E through the surface. And remember, you know it, oh, one microcoulomb is times four minus six coulomb. Now I will give you question second. Not a simple question. It says an infinite line of charge, line of charge reduces a field of Four point five two in the ten raise of four Newton per coulomb at a distance of one point nine six meter. Calculate. the linear charge density. I repeat, an infinite line of charge produces a field of, field is electric field, 4.52 into 10 is about 4 Newton per coulomb at a distance of 1.96 meter. Calculate the linear charge density, that is lambda. Let me calculate lambda in question number two. That's all for today. Thank you. Do your homework. Don't waste your time. Be sincere with your studies. God bless you. Assalamu alaikum.